Hey guys, King of Charmaster, Deal Beer Judge, your jury and your analyst, and today I bring to you um, uh, the most powerful Pidgeot team, the best Pidgeot team for Open Great League. Yes, Pidgeot actually made like the top five, I'm not even joking. When I was looking at the top performing teams, I think it was like last week, I was like, is that is that a Pidgeot? Did some crazy person actually, well, I broke, uh, I broke in an entire team that's weak to Scrappy on number one, so I'm not really surprised. But this is like number number six actually. So one, two, three, four, five, seven. This is the number six team in Pidgeot.com. It's Pidgeot G Fist Trevenant. And I don't know how Pidgeot well, you know what? Pidgeot made it. Pidgeot's good. Pidgeot's cool. I like Pidgeot a lot. Despite the fact that this team does struggle a little bit against wall rating, but it's still really freaking good. You're gonna see I will lose the lead in the shell cast and you're gonna see me destroy grass hole even though i see Bast bastion in the front which is pretty freaking funny but yeah pidgeot is actually a top six team and a top open great league team so pidgeot's gonna go fly hashtag murica and it's gonna go out and burb slash feather dance its way to victory but before we get started and this was this fun little shout cast. This is my therapist mental health tip of the day. So this is going to be from ther of course therapist A. If you want if you want to skip this, all you have to do is go and skip to the battles. Go to chapter, skip to the battles, and poof, you can skip to like the beginning. If you really want to do that. But as you see here, if you want to your free psychoeducation when therapy is like 400 freaking actually I discovered today that like in some places that aren't California high cost of living, it could be like 250 or more hour my brain is like no dang y'all are no mercy but this is about add or adhd so a so if you look on social media like tiktok like there's a trend i believe which made me like smack my face never self-diagnose yourself unless you are actually in therapy or you get diagnosed by a professional like a psychiatrist or something like that do never self-diagnose Especially from little children are influencers that don't know what the heck they're talking about. And they say, oh my God, I might be ADHD or anything like that. When you don't, when you don't have the symptoms of ADHD. Really pisses me off as an actual scare therapist because I actually had clients that have ADHD. And some of those, per one, some of those like to do it for views and to devalue mental, like to devalue the seriousness of mental illness or how to deal with it because those that have adhd or add deal with very very difficult challenges so for this it's not common that symptoms of adhd and add adhd are misunderstood hashtag my rant on freaking tiktok and all those influence that says oh my god i think i have adhd or adhd no you don't or most of you probably don't Parents often fear that their children with ADHD are trying to be difficult, not truly understand the challenges they face. Similarly, in adult relationships, symptoms of inattention are easily mistaken for aloofness, apathy, or uncaring. Sounds like Niantic, right? I'm just kidding. <laughs> for these reasons, psychoeducation is a crucial part of treating ADHD in children and adults alike. So every individual you treat, if you ever try to become a therapist, it's all gonna be different. This is why you can't diagnose your friends, families. Hell, I can't even I can't even do treatment for any one any one of my community because it's unethical. But I can do psychoeducation and I can tell you about my experiences and everything of that sort. And dealing with ADHD is definitely a huge, it definitely wasn't a enormous challenge. Luckily, I was able to help two of my ADHD clients, but that's not going to happen to everybody. So hopefully I get a good streak later on. But this is a great worksheet to give you education on what exactly ADHD and ADD is. Because there's a very specific set of symptoms and it's a very complex thing to diagnose and even treat. Because ADHD and autism can look alike. So it's a it's really hard to deal with. So again, don't listen to those. It, don't listen to anyone that isn't a licensed or practicing psychotherapist or mental health professional because it's nuts how many people devalue ADD or ADHD. And without further ado, this is my shoutcast for Pidgeot in Open Great League as it is a top six ma- actually it's in the top 16, it's a top six team and it's really freaking funny how the burb, the OG burb from Kanto is taking souls and taking elo. And let's get started. 
All right, so yes, Pidgey Hut is a top five team, and this is ridiculous, but it's actually pretty cool. You got Pidgeot onto Altaria. So unless you burp through shields, you actually lose this pretty hard, because we all know Altaria has a really big booty. So I have two, you have two choices here how to play this. One, you Brave Bird through shield, and then you switch because Altaria doesn't actually die to one Brave Bird. It'll literally be left by like one shred of HP. Or you bait, you grab a shield, you bait with Feather Dance, and you pray you grab a shield. In this instance, we don't grab a shield, which really sucks. So all I'm going to do here is I'm going to get a little more. I'm going to go straight for the Brave Bird. If they swap, that's okay. If this is a Sky Attack, that's fine. Because we debuff the minus two with Feather Dance, we should live. And as you see, we comfortably live. I swap in a G-Fisk, hoping to just bank that Brave Bird and hope that we can come out with a win condition out of it. Our opponent switches into Deoxys Defense. And just like ramen noodles, ramen noodles from Japan are amazing, by the way. In this instance, I will just straight 69420 Earthquake out of the ground. My opponent, Psycho Boost, Thunderbolt, and Rock Slide are all resisted. So, all we're going to do here is we're going to destroy ramen noodles. But speaking of noodles, noodles in Japan are really freaking good. So, fun fact, if you've never been to Japan, the way you order noodles in Japan is you go up to this machine, you grab a ticket, and then you give it to the chef. And then after that, they give you your refreshed ramen noodles, freshly made, and it's absolutely amazing. And you know what? It will bring down your shields. In this case, I will use no shields because double Psycho Boost is going to put this Deoxys defense in a minus four situation. So I can comfortably eat this Psycho Boost with Trevenant by putting it in, and I just want that extra farm. The thing is, Altaria is so weak that one Seed Bomb will either nearly kill it or put it in the red enough to where I can Shadow Claw down. And now I have a Trevenant and a Pidgeot with energy. So banking that Brave Bird earlier actually worked out. I'm going to go straight for the Shadow Ball here. I can eat one Poison Fang, but I don't want to because it's risky. Because even though it's going to take only one Shadow Ball to go through, if by some reason I die, it's bad. So we hit the Shadow Ball. All I'm going to do is going to combo in and we're going to hit the Brave Bird. And all I really have to do is hit one Gust and that should KO my opponent and that's GG's. So this is a great example of losing the lead and coming back with the dub. It's freaking Pidgeot is actually Super Saiyan Pidgeot is actually pretty freaking good except ash's pidgeot to this day ash said he would come back for his pidgeot and on this day ash still has not come back for his pidgeot after i don't know how many 11 years something like that anyways we all know ash is a terrible pokemon trainer it took him a decade to freaking win a championship for crying out loud but he still won a championship regardless so he's not all that bad we got Swampert on a Pidgeot, and that actually is pretty neutral because if you choose not to shield, you will die to two Hydro Cannons. We're able to bait a shield here, thankfully, so it's not a super bad matchup with our opponent. Our opponent switches into Altaria, and then we're going to switch into our Stunfisk. And when you lock in the Metal Pancake against the Blue Burb, guess what? Blue Burb dies. But you want to make sure you get as much energy as possible. When you're locked into a flyer like this, you don't want to be super risky. You can try to farm down the Atari, etc. However, I want to get a little bit of extra energy. So I'm going to go to 100 after this. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to bank a move for that Swamper. Yes, Swamper wins CMP, but you want to threaten your opponent with... You want to threaten your opponent's Hydro Cannon anyways. You want them to use it, basically. We're just going to eat both of these Sky Attacks right here. And then I'm going to charge up to two... Rock sides so that I can force my opponent to throw the energy. And at the same time, you don't want your opponent to farm you too much. But because we've been doing this back and forth, my switch timer is up now. So now I can kind of just comfortably go in and out. If the Swamper comes in, they're going to blow their move as predicted over here. Then we're going to swend in our Trevenant. Trevenant can comfortably tank anything Swamper has to offer. Except that Sludge Wave, because Sludge Wave kind of sucks. It'll put you over... It'll put you, I believe, in the yellow or something like that. And we get a Registeel. Our opponent banked this Hydro Cannon. So we're like, okay, this is going to be kind of rough. Because that's a whole Regi that's a whole Registeel. So when your opponent switches in a Registeel to you, they're probably going to Zap Cannon you. I don't... You theoretically don't have to shield this first one. I did, on accident. And I kind of slapped myself over because I'm like, wait a minute, I don't have to shield this. I don't have to shield this. But my plan was anyways to just get bank it, just literally bank and clear the debuff. All I have to do in this instance is do enough damage to Reggie Steel is going to take me out. And then all I have to do is get to 100 energy. And then all I have to do is just Shadow Ball and Seed Bomb for the victory. You can get a Seed Bomb and a Shadow Ball back to back as long as you have a bazillion energy. Zap Cannon will go through because I debuffed them with Feather Dance. It's not going to completely KO, but this is okay. 
Well, guaranteed to live the next move here, and all I have to do is just make sure I'm really good on my energy. One Shadow Ball will KO now that the debuff's been cleared from the previous Zap Cannon, and then all I have to do is get to the Seed Bomb and then KO. I didn't quite measure that correctly, but I win CMP anyways, and one Hydro Cannon won't kill at this range, so that's GG's. Even though that was a kind of roughly, like I mentioned, Hydro Cannon, Swampert and Nine Instincts can kill both of your shields if they wanted to, but they decided to switch out, so it's still a really rough lead. We've got a Trevenant into our Pidgeot. Finally, I win a freaking lead, and then we get an Azu. If you get an Azu put into you, of course you're going to send in the big Lord of the Rings tree. Lord of the Rings is coming out with a new season, by the way. Well, it's like this like new little, I forgot, it's like spinoff or whatever, so I'm actually pretty excited. And I can't, I, I'm like, ooh, 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 I can't wait to, or like, it's like before the rings were made or something. I'm a little bit of a Lord of the Rings fan. I watched the Twin Towers profusely when I was a child. I thought the whole fight scene, the whole like castle scene was just like the coolest thing on earth. Cause like, you know, giant wars. Yes. Unfortunately, Pokemon Go would never do that because Pokemon Go is a PG-13 thing and will never ever allow violent, even though, you know, it's funny, even though Pokemon is kind of like, animal fighting like animal fighting and everything like that you promote violence not like nintendo will never like do any like literally nintendo has a lot of things you have super smash bros you have mario etc it's very violent and yet they try to be like a child friendly gaming company even though your literal games are all about violence zelda you are trying you're literally this like swordsman trying to save this queen and do literally like class swords and everything like that i i don't like yes there is no peace it's all violence so anyways back to the battle here this is pretty much all we're gonna do is send in the trevenant against the pidgeot again we took out the azu with our trevenant and we can comfortably any move that this trevenant has to offer and we still got a whole g fisk as you see, Shadow Ball does near no damage, and then that's a whole nine tails. I'm gonna hit this Brave Bird just because I wanna hit you with the Suburban because I hate Charmers in the back. And then once I send in my Pancake, they should top left because I'll realize it's game over. And in the end, it didn't even matter. You tried so hard, you got so far, and then you used a Charmer because you suck at Go Battle. I'm just kidding. If you wanna get your sets done fast, use Charmers. Other than that, I hate Charmers. <laughs> I hate Charmers. I, don't, I will never use Tap Tap unless it's for content, like I did last time, and my soul is still reeling from using Tap Tap. Speaking of Tap Tap, that's a Bastiodon. So, all we're gonna do here is we're going to swap out. Now, when it comes to the Tap Tap team, when it comes to Rock Hole, Grass Hole, whichever one you want to call it, you generally want to win Switch, and hopefully in the back you see the Victory Bell. As you see here, we got Bastion and lead, and they swap into Sableye. This might be the number three team, I don't know, but what you want to do here is you want to win Switch. So I'm going to fire a Seed Bomb to fate my opponent, and then I'm going to Shadow Ball. If my You should shield here if you're the opponent, but they don't shield, and I'm like, why would you not do that? Why? If it's a Shadow Ball, you will threaten Sableye and you will Kate. Oh, now I have alignment, and now I can put G-Fisk onto this Bastion, and whatever is in the back is likely going to die to Pidgeot. So, as you see here, we get a Trevenant, and this is even worse. No, yeah, that, GG's. You see, this is why I don't care about Legend, because when you get an Expert, you tank to, to, to Veteran, you're wondering what the heck you do with your life choices. No, seriously, this is why I don't care. <laughs> Next up, we got Pidgeot into Victory Bell. Grass Hole number two. And then we get a Metacham. So, I can already predict there's probably going to be a Bastion in the back, so this is why you have Stunfisk. As with said, if you do encounter Grass Hole and you do lose the lead because you get the Bastion in front, all you have to do is switch out and try to win back Switch. That's literally the generic way to play it. Other than that, Pidgeot is freaking good. I don't know how Pidgeot landed in the top five, but hell, if it's statistically the most it's statistically the top five team, then I'm not gonna argue against it. Pidgeot is pretty baller, as you see here, as we ball out and see bomb the unholy crap at our opponent. And as you see here, there is the victory belt. All we're gonna do is break a shield. Even if our opponent tries to save both of the shields, if they have shield advantage, Likely they have a Bastion in the back. And as you see here, we're still able to get to another Shadow Ball so we can make up for whatever energy we lost from trying to see Bomb. Our opponent shields. All we're going to do is send in Pidgeot, and they give up Switch, send in Bastion, and they should top left in about three seconds. And as you see here, they do. And that's GG. And that's game. I hope y'all enjoyed the battles. Pidgeot in the top six was a whole lot of fun considering Walrein Trevcore dominated the entire freaking meta. For a very long, well, not for a long time, but yeah, Open Great League is just a mess right now. Where it's only, it's, it's, it was a lot more fun in the earlier seasons when Go Battle League first came out because you didn't have a bazillion things that were meta. 
now you have a bazillion things that are meta so you can't really like anything for the most part can work as long as you're used to it or if you really like it there's no magical team out there that's going to magically get you legend either run super meta either you you go against the meta or you become the you you become the meta i've done both so i just don't care at this point so but i should have uh you know what's funny if the game never lagged and if i actually tried to i actually would be legend by now i went 0 and 12 with char trying to make charizard work in the flying cup so my brain is like oh no regrets though i don't care about the beta pose so i'm not trying at all <laughs> I am doing my battles though because I want my Stardust, but, or just like whenever I'm just like waiting or I'm like in a meeting or something like that. But I will be going to Seattle Go Fest, so expect a whole lot of shorts to come out over the weekend about Seattle Go Fest. I'll probably do like a post or a video about it. If you would like that, let me know in the comments if you want me to do something. I have my like GoPro, my GoPro thing so I can create some pretty sweet videos. So I'm gonna, pretty excited. So I'm gonna do that. And I hope y'all are enjoying Go Battle League, or if you're going to Seattle and everything like that, I will also post a channel on my Discord saying where I'm pretty much going at any given point. Like, so, yes. Just if, just if y'all wanna, if y'all wanna say hi or something like that. But either way, I don't, either way, you don't have to say hi. I'm, a lot of us are gonna have fun, because I'm definitely gonna hang out with all my friends, and I'm like, all my friends, and we're gonna have a blast. All my friends I've met throughout my, like, six year playing this game when I was in the military, I'm gonna meet my friends from Tucson. Some for Cheyenne, and then of course my locals here in California. I have too many friends, which isn't a bad thing. So, yes, hopefully you do have some fun. Hopefully you do have fun at Seattle Go Fest, and we do have. And yes, so it's gonna be a pretty exciting week for those of you that are going. If not, it's okay. There will be another the next time. I'd rather actually be going to Yokohama than I would be United States because Japan. I would have loved to go to to the Yoko to the Japan one, but Japan's borders aren't open to side base. But I hope you all do enjoy your Go Battle League set. I hope please like, subscribe, and comment for the YouTube algorithm as you always do. And I appreciate you, those of you that do so. And good luck on your Go Battle League set. And I will see y'all on the next video.